Hi guys, it's Peter Dudley here, and yesterday Apple released Logic 10.1, a major update containing lots of very, very useful features. But we mustn't forget the fact that Logic Remote has also been updated, and it offers some amazing functionality, some of which I'd like to demo for you now. So as you can see here in the App Store, it's version 1.2. Once you've installed that update, make sure your iPad and your Mac are on the same Wi-Fi network. You can also connect your iPad and Logic Remote via a Bluetooth network. Um, there are some documents online which explain how to do that on Apple support. So once you've done that, you open up the app, you connect it to Logic, and we're going to open a project in Logic. OK. So at the moment, in the view menu, I'm on smart controls and drum pads. So currently, I have the drummer track selected. I can use the Logic Remote, for those of you who don't know, as a transport control to stop and play back and to return to the top. I've got these on-screen pads, which I'm tapping to trigger samples. Very, very useful. In terms of going through the kits, if I go to the browser, it's just like having the library open in Logic, as you can see on the left-hand side, I'll select a different kit there. A few seconds it loads up. You can change kits as it's playing back. It's a little pause as it loads the samples. So a very useful way to interact with Logic very useful, useful remote. Another practical example I'd like to mention is, um, you know, sometimes people think, oh yeah, it's a bit gimmicky, isn't it really? But think about this, if you're on your own recording and you are a fair distance away from your Mac or your recording setup because of the noise issues, you have your live room and your control room, well, rather than setting up a rid ridiculously long counting, you can actually have the remote to assist you to go into record to drop yourself in to correct different passages that you've done etc so that's a very practical use of Logic Remote. Now I'd like to just show you a couple of um, new features of the remote which I think are amazing. In the view menu I have selected the mixer view and we can select tracks just by tapping them on the iPad screen the way you select the track is at the bottom of the iPad screen where the actual labels are, so there's Audio 1. Uh, you can actually put yourself into Record. Now if you tap the I.O. strip, you can even see there's a recording level coming in because um, it's picking up my voice through the screen recorder. I can also choose inputs from my audio interface. At the moment I have an Apogee 1 connected which only has one input, so you're not able to see the demonstration of different inputs being selected but I can nevertheless send my output to a bus all from the Apple remote so incredibly powerful just to look at that feature alone. If you have a, have a track that contains MIDI effects then you are able to go in and open the plugin and play around with some of the parameters. Um, now if you don't have a keyboard attached to your uh, computer um, and you want to just audition uh, some of these uh, chords. Uh, I've got one called Chord Trigger, that's a MIDI effect in Logic, which is inserted before my audio instruments. Okay, so if I go to Smart Controls, I have a keyboard. So very useful, has uh, some practical usage there. So going back to the mixer view this time. Now I'd like to concentrate on the drummer track. Now on the drummer track, I'm going to, on the right hand side, choose my audio effects 1 to 8. So in other words, this will display 8 insert slots. And whichever effects are inserted into the drummer track are visible on my iPad screen. Now this is where it gets really interesting because let's go to the compressor. There's a brand new compressor in Logic, brand new interface and a new compressor model. So I open the plugin. Let's just open the corresponding plugin in Logic. The plugin is actually currently 
uh, turned off at the moment. That's because at the top of my iPad screen is a power button, so I can turn the plug-in on or off. We no longer talk about bypassing plugins. It's turning a plug-in on or off. That's a Logic 10 concept compared to earlier versions. So here are my controls on the iPad. So I can access all the important controls you would want to access within a compressor, the threshold, the ratio, the attack, the release, the knee, etc. Okay, so I can change uh, different plugin models all from the iPad remote. Very, very powerful. For this feature alone, um, it's worth the cost of free. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a free app. You do need an iPad to run it on. Okay, so let's give you a practical example of how this works. Let's reduce the threshold of this compressor. Play around with the threshold, increase it a bit. Now you can see it's here it's starting to pump. Really interactive. So there you go, that's just a really quick idea of what's possible. Very, very powerful indeed. But I want to show you another unique feature in Logic 10, 10.1, uh, and with this latest version of the remote, check the EQ display out. Pretty amazing. So I'm going to open the EQ on my iPad, open the plugin, and you have an exact replica of the interface of the EQ from Logic 10 on your iPad screen and it looks especially nice if you have a Retina iPad. Um, so let's just change to that plugin in Logic. There we go. I'm going to close the previous plugin window in Logic there. Okay, so how do I use this? Well let's start the playback. I'm going to engage a low cutoff filter and if I want to bring up around 50 kilohertz, 50 hertz rather, I'm just using my finger on the iPad remote. And you can just pull up or pull down any part of the frequency band. Now that took about 15 seconds. Absolutely amazing. Amazing interaction with Logic. Now, this is where it gets really, really interesting. Um, many of you out there, including myself, will use third-party audio unit plugins. I have my favorites. So you may not always want to use a Logic compressor. You have your you know, production tastes. You like to use different tools. So what about if we wanted to open a different plugin. I mean the fact that you can actually browse your your plugins from this remote is incredible. So I'm going to go to open plugin. That's the previous one I had, sorry. Let's go to the menu again. Choose plugin. Now you have all the logic categories in there and I go to audio units. So anything installed on my computer as an audio unit plugin I have available to me. So I'm going to go to favorite of mine PSP old timer. Choose the format, stereo. Let's close the EQ plugin and I should see the appropriate plugin. Now I think I possibly opened it up on the wrong channel strip here. No no problem, it's actually on the electric piano, I'm meant to open it up on the drummer. But if I go to open controls or open plugin, there we are. I have access to my parameters of the plugin. So if I just move it over here and I'm able to change the ratio, the amount of compression, etc. Pretty amazing. Obviously there's nothing recorded onto the road track right now, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to interact with the plugin parameters. So that's today's video on the brand new Logic Remote for iPad and Logic Pro 10.1. Thanks for watching.